This is video two for the intro to robotics. In this video, we are going to focus in on the VEX system. So we're going to take a look at all of the different VEX parts that you will be using to build your robot for a contest this year. So the VEX system is divided up into six categories. We've got structure, motion, power, sensors, logic, and control. So <clears throat> for the structure, this part is um, everything that holds your robot together. So this will be uh, all pieces of metal. All of your fasteners. By fastener, I mean something that holds uh, the metal together, like you know, the screws and the bolts and the nuts and everything else. Um, anything that happens to be plastic, so uh, washers, uh, we actually have a couple of different types of washers. We've got some metal washers and some Teflon washers. Uh, if there's any kind of bearings, uh, anything like that. Um, if there's any kind of uh, musical chords, uh, if there's any kind of chords that you might use to hold something together, any kind of elastic chords, like rubber bands, anything like that. All that would fall under the structure category. <coughs> Motion. Anything that makes the robot move. So, this will include all motors. Gears wheels, tank tread, and, you know, anything else we can think of for that part. Power. Um, basically, you know, gives energy to the robot. So basically with this, um, all of our batteries, and our chargers. The next part is our sensors. So this uh, allows the robot to um, interact with its environment or see the environment. I put C in quotation marks because you know a robot doesn't have eyes the way we have eyes, but there uh, there are other ways of seeing. You know, it has switches, so if it bumps into something, you can press a switch, and it lets the robot know that hey, there's something in front of me. I need to perform a different task. So this will include uh, bumper switches. So we have two types, bumper switches and limit switches. We have range finders, which tells a robot how far in front of its, you know, an object is. And we have encoders, which uh, basically count how many times the the axle has turned. We will not be doing a lot with sensors in Robotics 1. Uh, I try to save that for more of a Robotics 2 topic. The next part is the logic. So uh, this allows the robot to process information. So this includes the microcomputer.
This also includes all cables that will tie the microcomputer to your laptop. So it allows you to transfer your program from your laptop to the microcomputer on the robot. So for the control part, this is what allows the human to control it. So um, this includes the joystick, all transmitters, um, and anything else that might allow us to control the robot. All right, now let's take a look at some uh, specific parts. So looking at it, there's a lot of parts in the, in the VEX system. Um, so let's just take a look at the names of some of these. Uh, first off, we have our plates. Now I've got some different size plates. They're really uh, classified by holes. They're all five hole wide. And then for the length, I have 25 hole, 15, and 5. I think I might have 10 as well. So I have different lengths of plates. Uh, next we have our angle pieces, rail pieces, C-channel pieces. Now C-channel, I got some uh, narrow ones like this one, and I've got some wide C-channels. Uh, the single strip here, these are called bars. Um, really, these are weak. Don't plan on using these for anything that needs to hold weight. I consider a bar more like a, a piece of string. Next we have gussets. Um, and I've got several different types of gussets. I've got some 45 degree gussets, uh, pivoting gussets. Um, I also have some plus gussets. Hinges, I do not have a lot of hinges. I think I've got two hinges. On the other side up here, uh, we've got some pop rivets. We won't do a lot with pop rivets. Uh, I'll show you how to use them if you want to, but uh, most teams just stick with screws. Now, when it comes to the screws, I have two different types. Um, I've got screws for the structure, like this one. And then I have some smaller motor mounting. And the smaller ones, um, they use the 5 64ths screwdriver, and the structure one, I believe, is 3 32nd. But there's two different size screwdrivers. Uh, they are all hex heads. Uh, they're not Phillips or flat heads. So um, they're, they're easy to strip out, and that's something I'll go over with you guys when we go to assembling. For uh, the fasteners, then, the or you know, the nuts, we have two different types. We have caps, which uh, with the caps, you'll see this tiny little metal jagged ring here. Uh, that's meant to grip into the metal on the structure. So you always want to have that part facing towards uh, something you can grab a hold of. And then the second type is called the nylock. Nylock has this little bit of plastic, and as you tighten it down onto a screw, that plastic bends and molds over the screw, and it keeps it in place. Washers, uh, I have metal washers, and I have Teflon washers. The Teflon one is for low friction applications, so if you want something that, if you want to keep something from rubbing. Uh, spacers, the little black spacers, I have two sizes. Um, I think an 8 millimeter and a 4.6 millimeter. Standoffs, I have a lot of different standoffs. Now these standoffs are made out of aluminum, so they're very easy to damage, so I want you to be careful when you're using your standoffs. And zip ties, um, you can get plenty of zip ties. We can go through those if you need them. Continuing on uh, with the motion, uh, we have uh, the motors that we're going to use. It's a two-wire motor. Uh, it's called a 393 motor. 
Now, on the microcomputer, it has a three-wire plug. So we have to have this motor controller 29. And what that does is it converts the two-wire into a three-wire. Uh, and again, when I show you that, it, it'll make sense. As far as gears go, I have 12 tooth gears, 36 tooth gears, 60 tooth gears, and 84 tooth gears. So I have four different size gears. Um, also, I have low strength and high strength gears. And again, when you hold them in your hands, you'll, you'll know the difference between them. Um, going along with 12 tooth gears, I have these thicker metal ones. These are called a pinion gear. And you know, they're just 12 tooth. And here's our high strength. And again, it's kind of the same as the low strength. Rack gears, um, these are just basically converts uh, rotational motion into linear motion. And uh, when you see those, it'll make sense. I got some sprockets and chain. Now for the wheels, I have three types of wheels. I've got a small 2.75. Now that 2.75 is the diameter. So this wheel has a diameter of 2.75 inches. And then I've got a, a four inch diameter wheel that's high traction and then a four inch diameter wheel which is an omnidirectional wheel. Those are a lot of fun. So when you get to actually hold those you'll, you'll get an idea for what those are for. I have some intake rollers, uh, drive shafts. Now for this system the drive shafts are square shafts. Um, so because of that you always want to use a bearing. So a bearing it's down here at the bottom, this bearing flat. Um, and when I show you, show you how to assemble it, it'll make sense again. Shaft collars, uh, they have this little tiny set screw. This set screw will strip out if you over tighten it. And that basically goes onto the drive shaft to keep the drive shaft from sliding off of your robot. And then we've got some locking bars and pillow, blo pillow block bearings as well. Um, coming up for uh, power, we have our smart charger. The battery we use is a 7.2 volt, uh, 3,000 milliamp hour battery. And then we also have to have a backup battery, a little 9 volt. So when you build your robot, you just have to make sure you have that in place. And then at contest, I'll make sure you have your 9 volts. Uh, some sensors here. Again, we won't do a lot with sensors this year. Uh, here is our microcomputer. It just bolts onto the robot. And then we got some other things here for programming. Uh, this cable right here is very important because that cable connects your computer to your microcomputer so you can transfer your code. Uh, as far as control goes, here's our joystick. So that's how we you know, do the manual control of the, over it. And then finally, uh, these devices right here, they look like little USB memory sticks, but they're not. They are uh, the transmitter. So you plug one into your joystick and you plug the other one into your microcomputer. So two of those. Uh, allows you to con you know, connect with your robot. All right, this uh, finishes up the notes for this unit.